Hello and welcome. My name is Mohammed Sharif. In today's video, we'll be discussing the shared service. Cisco ECI introduced a very uh, beneficial feature in the environment, which is the multi-tenancy and, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, segmentation, where you can uh, slice up your network into completely isolated domain, or I would, I would say tenants, uh, where each tenant each tenant have its own routing instant layer two instant hence achieving the complete isolation and the complete uh, administrative authorities over this uh, over this uh, tenant uh, in particular uh, apart from the other tenant hence achieving the uh, uh, full isolation between all the tenants within your fabric uh, however in some situation you need to uh, share some uh, some services instead of having a, a dedicated uh, service for each and every tenant. For instance, your DNS server. Why do we need? Why do you need to have a dedicated DNS server uh, uh, for each and every tenant, where you can apply one common DNS service uh, server that can serve all those tenants? Hence come the uh, solution of the uh, shared services that Cisco ACI uh, introduced. There are two ways that you can share services across uh, your uh, Cisco ACI tenant. Uh, you can do it via the uh, common tenant, which will be discussed. We have previously in the tenant section, we, have, we, ha we came across the common tenant. Uh, and the common tenant is one of the way where you can uh, share the services across different terrains in your Cisco ACI. The other way is to do the VRF route leakage, uh, leakage where we'll discuss it, uh, we'll discuss it uh, in further detail the upcoming uh, videos, uh, inshallah. So uh, uh, those are the uh, two ways where you can uh, divide, uh, where you can uh, uh, share, uh, share uh, services across your ACI fabric. In today's video, we'll be focusing on the common tenant and what is the benefit of the common uh, tenant. Now, how the common tenant works? The common tenant, it's a predefined configure tenant where it contain a complete tenant uh, component such as VRF and bridge domain. The purpose of this tenant is to uh, 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 to be accessible for all other tenant in your environment where it can uh, uh, share its VRF and bridge domain uh, across all the other tenants in your environment. Um, uh, therefore, if you have like DNS server or NTB server, you can host it on the common tenant and accordingly the common tenant will provide all this information your NTB DNS information into uh, other uh, other tenant uh, you don't need to create the common tenant it's there by default or you have to do it just attach your DNS NTB uh, uh, NTB or whatever service you have in the common tenant and by default uh, uh, it will be shared across other uh, tenant in the environment. <clears throat> now, how do we configure the common tenant? There are two ways to configure the common tenant. One of them by sharing a VRF, the other by sharing a bridge domain. Let's, look, uh, let's have a look at the VRF sharing concept inside the common tenant. Uh, once you create a, a VRF, inside the common tenant, all of this configuration will be uh, populated inside the user tenant, such as tenant one and tenant two. As per this diagram, here are my common tenant, and you can see here that VRF1, okay, once it's created, it will be pushed inside tenant one and tenant two. So simply the user have to attach the bridge domain inside uh, this uh, VRF which will be visible inside the which will be visible inside the, the, the user tenant itself it will it will uh, it will be uh, shared I would say use this shared sources by the VRF itself. So how the configuration will go you have a DNS 
and this DNS on IP subnet, which, which are different than the bridge domain on the user, uh, in the user tenant, which will be attached to the VRF itself. So once you uh, uh, attach the user bridge domain to this VRF, it will have reachability to the DNS, uh, which is uh, which is uh, uh, inside the uh, common uh, tenant. That one way. The other way is by sharing the bridge domain itself, and you directly attach the EBG. So, what is the difference between the VRF sh uh, VRF sharing inside the common tenant and the bridge domain? It it's simply the layer uh, layer three against the layer two. Let's say, for instance, that you want to maintain different IP address for different uh, for different bridge domain inside the user tenant as well as the common tenant. Then, most likely, you will go to the VRF approach, whereas the uh, the uh, the bridge domain approach that uh, uh, implies as an uh, uh, require that the uh, the shared service. Uh, and also, I will say the consuming uh, EBGs inside the user tenant would be within the same uh, subnet. So it's kind of via, it's kind of like VRF. It's it's more like a layer three routed approach for sharing services, whereas the bridge domain is like layer two uh, flat uh, uh, layer two network for sharing. Uh, services. Let's have a look at this use case. Assuming that I have common service which live inside my L3 out, pointing to maybe outside network, maybe service provider, internet, or whatever. Okay, you can have like internet access uh, for the corporate network, DNS, NTV, or whatever shared services that you can offer to your ECI fabric. Simply, once this L3 out, okay, and by the way, it can be also an EBG if it's there, if this shared service directly attached to your Cisco ACI fabric can be also a EBG. Once the EBG itself, either it's a user EBG or L3 out EBG attached to the common VRF, it start it will start to replicate the common VRF inside all of the tenants simultaneously at the team at the same time so whenever you have some bridge domain who needs to have access for 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 this particular services it needs to call or to be attached with the vrf uh, uh, the common vrf uh, that will route it across tenant to the l3 out which is pointing to the service now how this relationship happens, how, how, you, how the leakage between tenant happens. As we have mentioned earlier that the contract is very crucial part at the Cisco ECI. As a matter of fact, the contract, uh, it, it, it will instruct a, a, the EBGs to uh, start to communicate each other on certain way based on your configuration. There is some uh, uh, very uh, there is some important uh, part at the at the uh, at the contract itself. It's called the scope of the contract. What will be the scope of my contract? There are some contracts where it uh, where it have a scope inside the VRF, and there are such as normal. Uh, when I say uh, uh, inside the VRF, I say that this particular contract will be effective inside the VRF area. Uh, uh, similar to that, the normal contract that we configure between EBGs to provide access between each other, as we have uh, explained earlier in the logical construct uh, videos. Another scope is inside the tenant itself. So the scope of the contract will, will cross all the VRF and it will be inside the tenant. And an example for that is the route leakage, for instance. When you want to do route leakage between VRFs, uh, so you have to uh, define a, the tenant uh, scope inside your contract. Another way, it will be the global contract. And as the name implies, the global contract 
that means my contract will be applied for all the tenant that lives inside my ECI fabric. In our, in our situation here for using the common tenant and how we can replicate this configuration, simply it will, buy, it will be done by relying on the, the, uh, on the global configuration uh, in, the, in, the, in the tenant VRF configuration as well as the global contract concept where you can provide accessibility and reachability uh, across a different tenant that lives inside your ACI fabric. Now, let us have a look inside our lab scenario here. Our lab simply we have ABC tenant Okay, and there is an EBG inside it. It's called the IT. I need to, uh, uh, and there is also other EBG for HR. And I have DNS server. And also internet through L3 out. That's needed to be shared for the EBC tenant uh, and any uh, upcoming uh, new tenant that will be created uh, uh, in the near future. So I need to share the DNS as well as the L3 out. How I'm going to do that? Simply, if you go to tenant and if you will explore, explore all the tenant, you'll find there is there are four tenants. One of them is the user tenant, the predefined user tenant, and the other would be the common tenant we have discussed in the, uh, throughout this video, infrastructure and management. We have briefed you, uh, I have briefed you regarding those uh, uh, tenant in the uh, logical construct video. However, we'll, uh, uh, we'll talk about them uh, more in the upcoming video. So, simply I need to go to the common a tenant <clears throat> and let's assume I want to start off with the internet sharing first we'll create an L3 out here that should be the L3 out should be attached let's assume that uh, that it's an internet CBE router from your service provider so it have all the access policy con uh, configures so I need to assign a tenant for this bar uh, particular access policy Let's assume that the access policy is already there and it's already pre-configured. So what I'm going to do now, I will go to the networking port for the L3 out and create L3 out. I will call it the L3 out. I will call it the ISP. Okay. A ISP common. Now, in the VRF part, there are two pre-configured, predefined uh, VRF that came by default in the common tenant. One of them is called uh, copy, the other it's called default. However, for uh, the illustration purposes, I will create a custom VRF uh, inside the common tenant. Usually, you will use the default uh, VRF. However, uh, for, the, uh, for the explanation, uh, for the sake of explaining how the concept of, uh, of common works, we'll create a VRF and we'll call it VRF common. Press submit. We'll give it the uh, domain that we have configured earlier, the access policy, and uh, we'll click next. Okay. We, it will be a node 101. We'll give it a router ID of one slash, uh, sorry, uh, it's like a normal uh, L3 out. Now, the only difference is that the scope of this L3 out crossing all the tenant, it's not specified for a particular tenant, it's for all the tenant uh, inside uh, your ECI fabric. IP address 
uh, 10.16.16.16 for instance slash 24 we'll click next we'll click uh, we'll give now the EVG we have to name it EVG EVG L3 out and we click finish okay now we have created our L3 out pointing to the outside okay uh, what else we need to do we need to create an EVG also that will have our DNS server inside the uh, in the environment okay uh, lives in so I'll go to the application profile let us first uh, create uh, uh, okay now let us first use okay it will use a default one no worries I'll call this shared EBG okay I'll go with uh, with the default one or I would create another one for the sake of uh, explanation I will call it bridge domain underscore common and this bridge domain lives inside the VRF common we'll give it an IB address we would say this will be 10 10.15.15.15 slash 24 our server will be 10 or whatever we click next okay finish finish now we have our shared service let us let give let us give it a domain as well And let us assign an IB address. Uh, sorry, an interface. I will see it's a port. And it will be one slash six. And it will. Sorry, I'm still not sure about that. Uh, and it will be an access. We'll give it VLAN pool 18, for instance. Okay. Now I have my uh, now I have my my uh, uh, L three out as well as the DNS uh, um, uh, uh, actively uh, associated with the common uh, VRF that we have created. It's a it's a, actually it's a custom VRF. We did not rely on the default one. Let us go to our user tenant here. okay and what we need to do here that we should go to the bridge domain because that the bridge domain that should be connected to the uh, ACI that should be connected to the VRF of the common and inside this bridge domain you can uh, you can see the the EBGs that is assigned to okay go here to operational I believe not here okay associated endpoint and of course there are endpoint which are which is uh, uh, related uh, you can see here there is some endpoint living for uh, uh, outside the uh, connectivity I want to see which ABG connected to this so anyway, we'll go to policy here at the VRF scope. Okay, you can see here a VRF newly added. It's called VRF slash common. Okay, once you define this VRF, this bridge domain along with the associated EBGs will be on the same VRF, whereas your L3 out at the common tenant site. Therefore, they can bang each other because now there is an active VRF crossing the user tenants 
uh, reaching this EBG out to the L3 out, which is having the internet connectivity, as well as the DNS. And finally, we have to configure uh, the contract. How are we going to configure the contract? We'll go to tenant, common, contract. Okay, we'll go for the standard contract, similar to any uh, other contract we have created before. We'll create our contract. We'll name it uh, a common contract. Now, uh, here are some differences between the uh, normal contract that we have created in previous video and the uh, common, uh, common contract. Uh, the scope of the contract would be a global, meaning uh, this contract will be effective globally uh, in the Cisco ECI fabric across all <coughs> tenants. We create subject. Like common subject. Now we have to create a filter as well. We can use, uh, or you know, we we'll create a new filter also. We're gonna allow uh, DNS. And also, we're going to allow Bing. We'll click Submit. Date. OK. Submit. Now, our contract has been, uh, has been created. Next thing we want to do. We want to go to the L3 out. The L3 out that we have created. And we need to go to the EVG. And the contract of the EVG. And we'll, we'll make it as a provider since it will provide internet for the other tenants on the uh, uh, user tenant uh, and the user tenant. So I will use the common tenant. I'll press submit. Also, we'll go for the uh, shared uh, EBG. Also, that we have created earlier under contract. We're going to choose provide, submit. Now, in, uh, at this stage, we have the L3 out created. We have the DNS or the shared EBG created. We have applied, uh, we have created contract and apply a contract as provide in the common tenant. Now, let's go to uh, a, our user tenant, what's called EBT production, and then we'll go under the EBG of IT and contract and will consume what will happen that you will have the uh, contract uh, uh, which is in a global uh, in the global uh, uh, previously uh, 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 I mean um, in the um, in the normal situation, I mean, in normal situation, each tenant will contain its own contract, at, and it will not uh, it will not uh, replicate it to the other tenant, uh, hence completing the total segregation. But once in the contract itself, you start to define the scope of the contract, either it's VRF 
or or uh, or or choose globally in precise this particular contract will appear on all in all uh, in all uh, tenants okay uh, similar to our situation here Now, we have our uh, contract uh, applied. Thank you for watching, and uh, I hope this has been informative to you.